Mediation analysis is useful because it allows us to study mechanisms. In this video, I'll talk about a modern approach to mediation analysis called causal mediation. If you come from regression analysis or structural regression modeling background, the literature on causal mediation analysis might be a bit difficult to understand because the terminology is a bit different. Instead of building on any particular statistical model, this literature builds on the counterfactual model for causality. This little glossary from this guidelines article for medical researchers is useful to have at hand when you start reading about causal mediation the first time. Let's go to the actual mediation model now. The first approach to mediation that we're usually taught on research methods course is this product of coefficients or Baron and Kenny approach. The idea is that we have two models. We have a model for y as a function of x and m, and then we have a model for m as a function of x. We can have some controls too, but this is just the simplest possible case. And then we learn that the mediation effect is the product of two coefficients. So it's this path beta m1 multiplied by this path beta y2, and that gives you the mediation effect. Another thing that we learn is that there are two kinds of mediation. There is full mediation and there's partial mediation. If this direct effect from x to y is zero after controlling for m, we have full mediation. If it's non-zero, we have partial mediation. Of course, this linear model can be extended by, for example, adding a correlation between these two error terms, which would make it an instrumental variable model for mediation. This approach and the linear models have a couple of important limitations. The problems are, first, that this approach is applicable to only uh, a few special cases of nonlinear models. So, for example, if this model for mediator is logistic regression model, the product of coefficients wouldn't really apply. The product would not make any sense in that case, and in some cases the product might make sense, but the result that it gives would still be incorrect. The second problem is that this model assumes no interaction between beta m1 and beta y2. The idea here is that there is causal heterogeneity. The effect of x to m is not the same for all people. The effect of m to y from m to y is not the same for all people. And if these variations in these two effects correlate, then uh, this model no longer holds. The third problem is that this is not really a definition for, cause, for mediation. So mediation is a causal concept and defining mediation in terms of a particular statistical model would be problematic because we might want to think about mediation in, in broader terms as well. Let's talk about each of these three problems in turn. The nonlinear mediation model, one example could be something like that. So we have an exponential function for y, and this might be, for example, Poisson regression analysis. Let's see how it works. So we, we take the uh, equation for the mediator and, and we plug it in in place of m, and that's, that's what we get. So we have exponential function for y, and then the, fun the uh, equation for, for m is there inside the exponential. We play around the equation a bit, and we get that kind of form. So we simply multiply out and remove the parentheses, and we can see that this is still a pretty nice exponential model. We can actually interpret the product of coefficients in terms of exponential model coefficient. So uh, we multiply them together, and that is in interpreted as a relative change in, in outcome. Why does it work? It works because the effects are interchangeable. So we, we multiply two coefficients together and the product, they are interchangeable in the way that they both contribute to the product the same way. They are also interchangeable in a way that if we multiply one by two, we can divide the other by two and the outcome will be the same. So because these coefficients work the same way in the equation, we can, uh, we can multiply them together, and that gives us a sensible interpretation. Let's take another example. So this is a, a nonlinear model again, but we have an exponential model for mediator, like Poisson regression analysis for mediator, and let's try to do the same. So we have the 
equation for y, we take the equation for m, we plug it in place of m into the equation for y, we get that kind of equation, we, we uh, try to multiply, multiply to remove the parentheses, and we get that kind of monstrosity here. In this case, the product of coefficients does not work. The reason is that these coefficients don't work the same way. They're not interchangeable anymore. So beta m1 and beta y2 work differently because beta m1 is exponentiated, beta y2 is not. The model also is some kind of weird combination of, of additive model. So we add beta 0 and beta y1 together and then we multiply these coefficients together. So it would be very difficult to interpret that model. So uh, this is the, the nonlinear problem. Then we have the second problem, no interaction assumption. And let's take a look at what that means. Ima and his co-authors use this table to demonstrate the no interaction assumption. They show that there is a positive causal effect of the treatment on the mediator and there is positive causal effect of the mediator on the outcome, but still it's possible that the mediator effect is negative. How can that be? Let's take a look at this table piece by piece. So we have first two potential outcomes. So this builds on the counterfactual model for causality. And uh, we have potential outcomes means that we could assign an individual into treatment or control, but not both. So there are two potential outcomes out of which only one is realized. The causal effect is the difference between these two outcomes. So we have the outcome for these individuals if there is the treatment for some, mediator is positive for some, it's zero. And then we have the outcome for the control cases and for some it's positive, for some it's zero. Then uh, the causal effect is the difference between these two potential outcomes and we can see that we have causal heterogeneity here. So for the first part of the population the effect is positive, for, for this part it is negative and then for these two other parts there is no causal effect. So we normally can't estimate these individual causal effects. The best thing that we can do is to estimate the average treatment effect, which is shown here. So it is simply the average of the individual effects weighted by the, si by the population fraction. So uh, 0 0.3 times 1 plus 0 0.1 times minus 1 equals 0 0.2. That's the average treatment effect. Then we have these two other columns and, and these show uh, the scenario where the mediator is manipulated. So if the mediator is, is one versus the mediator is zero. So this is the outcome for mediator treatment. So what is the value of y when mediator is set to one? And then we have the mediator control when mediator is set to zero. What is the value of y for the different fractions of the population and again, we can see that we have a causal heterogeneity in these mediator effects, but the average treatment effect is 0 0.2, calculated the same way, minus 1 times 0 0.3 plus 1 times 0 0.3, that's 0, minus 1 times 0 0.1 plus 1 times 0 0.3, that is 0 0.2. So we have 0 0.2 is the causal effect if we manipulate the, the uh, the treatment and if we manipulate the mediator, the, the causal effects are 0.2 in both cases. So how is it possible that the mediator effect is 0.2? Let's take a look at this table. So we have here positive average treatment effects for, for mediator and for treatment. And then uh, we have negative average treatment effect. How can that be? The, the reason is that if we calculate the mediator effect, we are not looking at these averages, but instead we are looking at individuals. And uh, for, for this part of the population and this part of the population, the treatment has no effect on the mediator. So there is no mediation effect. We can just ignore those. And then if we take a look at what is the average effect, it's, it's 1 divided by minus 1. It is minus 1 here. It is minus 1 uh, multiplied by minus 1, which is 1 here and we take a weighted average minus 1 times 0.3 plus 1 times 0.1 gives us minus 0.2. So there's negative average treatment effect. 
Let's take another look at this example to really understand what is going on. And, and this is a, a, a simulated population of, of 10 subjects, which is, uh, corresponds to the table shown up, uh, on the previous slide. And this is the mediation model. So we have T to M, M to Y, and then product. We can see that the first three subjects, they are the mediation effect, the product of these two coefficients is one. Then we have three zeros, one or minus ones, three zeros, one, three zeros. And the average is 0 point, minus 0 0.2. How is that? How is that possible? So let, let's do a bit of, of, of math. So we have beta m1, beta y2, and then the product of coefficients. And uh, the product of coefficients approach works when the expected product of coefficients is the product of the expectations. So normally when we calculate the product of coefficients, we calculate this beta m1, which is an estimate of the average treatment effect. It's not individual treatment effect. Then we have beta y2, which is an estimate of the average treatment effect again, and we multiply them together. So, so we do this kind of right, this multiplication here, we multiply two uh, average treatment effects together, but we should really be looking at the average or the expectation of the individual treatment effect instead. So when does this equation hold? If we uh, Google product of expected value of product of the random variables, we learn that uh, this uh, holds when these two effects, beta m1 and beta y2 are independent. A bit more Googling tells us that the expectation of product is the product of expecta expectations plus the covariance of these two x and y. So this x and y are these two betas here. And if we calculate the covariance between our beta m1 and beta y2, the individual causal effects, um, we can do that in R, and that's the covariance. We plug the covariance here, it is minus 24 plus 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 gives us minus 2. So we can apply math to come to the same conclusion. And here we need to multiply by 9 and divide by 10 because we are working with uh, the, uh, the population covariance instead of our sample covariance, which we normally calculate. So the no interaction assumption means that these two causal effects should be uncorrelated. So, so this is the second problem. And, and what's the third problem? The, the third problem is that Causal, causality or mediation is really a causal concept and not a statistical concept tied to a particular model. So uh, what will happen if we define mediation as a product of two coefficients? So let's define that mediation effect is product of two coefficients where, where beta m1 and beta y2 come from linear model. If we define mediation this way, then these two examples that we just went through wouldn't be mediation. But this is something that we would consider as mediation. So most researchers would say that yes, this is a mediation model because m is affected uh, by x and then m affects y. So there's a chain of, of causality. Same here. So if we define mediation in terms of linear model, it's incompatible of how researchers actually think about mediation. So this is the uh, mediation as a product of coefficients. And then the next question is how should we actually define mediation? So if the product of coefficients does not really work as a definition, what should be the definition of mediation? Let's take a look at the causal mediation literature. This article by Nguyen in Psychological Methods talks about the definition of mediation effect and how we can make different uh, how we can actually define the mediation effect using counterfactuals in a few different ways. And they uh, start with an important distinction. So we have three things. We need to first define what is a mediation effect. This is the first problem. The second problem is identification. So what kind of assumptions are needed for us or what kind of research designs, what kind of data are needed uh, required to make a causal claim about mediation. So this is the causal identification problem. And then we have estimation problem. 
And these are three distinct things. So we have the definition, then we have resources and assumption. And this is, this is just the mechanics. How do you actually calculate the mediation effect using your statistical software? And uh, I'll talk about the definition of mediation from now on. I'll talk about estimation and identification in other videos. So how do we define a causal mediation effect? Imai has written a really uh, nice paper. It's a bit technical, but it's a classic paper in 2010 in Psychological Methods on how do we define mediator and mediation. And they consider four cases that we have. So we have four combinations of treatment and mediator. So we have these four cases. We have treatment. An individual received a treatment and their mediator was observed after the treatment. Then we have individuals who did not receive the treatment and their mediation was observed under the condition of no treatment. So um, we mark this as y1, m1, y0, m0 to indicate no treatment and mediator was not affected by treatment. Then we also have two counterfactual conditions that we can think of. So we have this counterfactual where this individual received the treatment, but their mediator is as if they would not have received the treatment. And then we have uh, this fourth case, individuals who did not receive the treatment, but mediator is as if they had received the treatment. We have, of course, no way of ever observing these two outcomes. And that is a statistical problem, an estimation problem, but it's not really a problem for definition of, of mediation. So let's regroup these uh, outcomes, these four cases a bit to see what Imai's definition of mediation is. So we regroup them a bit and we can see that the individual causal mediation effect is the difference between two outcomes. So for in, in Imai's paper, it's defined this way. So uh, for the treated cases, the mediation effect is the, uh, the difference between the observed case and difference and, and the counterfactual case where the mediator would not have been affected by the treatment. For the controlled cases, for the control cases that did not receive the treatment, the uh, mediator effect on the individual level would be calculated by setting the mediator to the, the, uh, the treatment condition, but holding the individual still with, in the untreated group. And, and this equation shows it. So, the mediation effect is the difference between uh, whatever was observed for the treatment compared to whatever was observed in the treatment and had the mediator been observed in the opposite treatment condition. So it is the difference between the observed case and the counterfactual case where either the mediator would have been affected by the treatment for the untreated cases or the mediator had not affected by the treatment for the treated cases. And there are uh, a, a few nuances on this. This article by Selly makes a, a, a more, gives a more accessible explanation. So they write that the natural direct effect is how much the outcome would change if the treatment was exogenous set to zero to, or one for each individual, but the mediator was uh, kept at the level it would have been taken. So this is natural direct effect. And then natural indirect effect or the mediator effect is uh, the same thing except that we manipulate the mediator uh, counterfactual instead of the outcome. One important word in this is the natural. And, and this is something, these natural effects are, are contrasted to controlled effects. The controlled effects in this causal mediation literature refer to effects that you would get from studies where you manipulate the treatment and you also manipulate the mediator. But natural effects are, are much more common and they refer to scenarios where the treatment is allowed to naturally affect the mediator without the mediator being manipulated by the researcher. So most of the time when we talk about mediation effect, we refer to the natural mediation effect or natural indirect effect and the natural direct effect. To make things a bit more complicated, Nguyen here uh, explains that there are actually a couple of different ways that this mediator 
can be can be this mediation effect can be thought about. So uh, they they think about three worlds, and uh, one world is is where the individual is assigned to the treatment, and their mediator is naturally observed uh, after the treatment. Uh, sorry, the control. So they assign the control. The mediation mediators are uh, observed under the control condition, and then the other uh, condition that we can observe is the uh, the individual would be assigned to the treatment, and the mediator is observed under the treatment. And then we have this in between world where uh, individual is assigned to treatment, but their mediator is not affected by the treatment. And they show that this contrast, the difference between these two outcomes, is the natural direct effect. So this is the, uh, the natural direct effect if we manipulate the, uh, the, the treatment, but we fix the mediator to be uh, the, the non-treated value. And this is the natural indirect effect where we have the fixed treatment at one, and then we manipulate, allow the mediator to get it, its natural value instead of being fixed to, uh, to the untreated case. But this is not the only way. We could also have this contrast here. So we could have this uh, contrast where we uh, start by not manipulating the treatment, but we manipulate the mediator. And uh, this is a non-trivial issue. How do we choose the comparison point? So, so let's take a look at the numerical example then. So we have five subjects here. We have uh, the effect mediator under treatment, uh, mediator under control, MT0, mediator under treatment. We have uh, the natural, uh, untreated, no mediation, treated mediation. And then we have these counterfactuals that we can never observe. And these are calculated based on this, this simple model of exponential effect on Y and linear model of t on the mediator. The question now is which counterfactual do we use when we start to, to, to decompose the, the, the total effect. So the total effect is simply uh, the difference between uh, the outcomes of, of uh, not having a treatment and control and mediator under control and having uh, been treated and the mediator affected by the treatment. So this is the total effect is difference between these two potential outcomes. So do we use this, uh, this uh, manipulate treatment first, mediator then, or this manipulate mediator first, treatment then, then uh, outcome. So which counterfactual do we apply? This is a non-trivial question because there are difference is going to be quite big. So this is called the direct indirect decomposition in UN's article. So we can see that there are, we manipulate the treatment first, the, the dot shows the manipulation treatment mediator is fixed to the untreated scenario. And uh, the, the average is going to be 7.2. So that's the average treatment effect. Then uh, the average uh, natural indirect effect through the mediator, when we uh, fix the, the treatment to be one and we manipulate the mediator, that's the dot here, would be 73. So it's the difference between 85 and 11.1. If we use the other counterfactual, then uh, we get slightly different results. So uh, we, we manipulate the mediator first, we get uh, the natural indirect effect would be 72, 27.2 and the natural direct effect would be 53.8. And quite often we want to know, compare the magnitude of these two, two effects. So how large share of the effect is mediated. Here, when we make a comparison, 73.7 is about 10 times as large as 7.3. So we would, based on this first decomposition, we would say that the mediation effect is 10 times as strong as the direct effect. But in the second comparison, we would show that the, the actually the uh, natural indirect effect, the effect of, of the mediator is 27.2, the natural direct effect is 53.8, so it's actually the mediator effect is just half of the direct effect. So is the mediator effect uh, 
10 times stronger than the direct effect or is it half of the direct effect? That's a 20-fold difference. So, so how do we re reconcile it? The Nguyen's paper talks about how to make this choice, but uh, my take on, on this is that there's actually a, actually a better way of, of approaching this. The, the idea of thinking about this as absolute differences is, is, is not ideal. The, the reason is that we have an exponential model here. And interpreting exponentials in terms of absolute differences is not as useful as interpreting exponentials as uh, relative differences. If we calculate relative effects, then the NDE natural direct effect is 2.7. So uh, the outcome increases by 2.7 and the natural indirect effect is 7.4. The outcome increases by 7.4 and now the order doesn't matter. So if we calculate the ratios of these two effects, they are going to be the same in both cases. So uh, Nguyen's article gives uh, guidance on which counterfactual to apply. My take is that if you really ha have a nonlinear model in the outcome, which would produce different effects for the natural and indirect and direct effect depending on the decomposition, it's better to interpret the model as nonlinear instead of looking at absolute differences. So in this video I talked about uh, the definition of causality. So what is the causal effect through the mediator? And uh, I went through the counterfactual definition of, of causal mediation effect. Now, this is a lot more complicated than, than Baron and Kenny. And, and can we say that the Baron and Kenny is outdated because of availability of this more rigorous definition of causality? The answer is yes and, and no. In, in the sense that the, the yes answer is that the Baron and Kenny product of coefficients probably should not be used as a definition of what is mediation. But as we'll see in, in my video about estimation of these effects, the Baron Kenny product of coefficients is still a useful estimation technique. So, how do we define an effect? How do we uh, identify an effect? And how do we estimate an effect? Are three different things. And as an estimation technique, this is still completely valid.